I think what we get hung up in on is on being normal. Through that whole counseling session, it was for summer, I would share with Anne well, what, before when I was normal. And she stopped me one day and she said, describe normal to me. And it was a new concept for me because everything was normal before my stroke and everything after my stroke was abnormal. She said, what's normal? And I, I couldn't answer her. And she said, I'll, t I'll answer it for you. Normal for Millie Graham now is to use one hand and one strong leg. And, and that's normal. I'm going to make a, a soup. And I make a lot of soup because it's one meal in a pot. Doug loves it. He, he will eat it day and night. He takes it to work. And it's a complete... You just learn to do things differently. Joyce told me the very first day, you'll learn how to, to do things differently. She said, in fact, you'll use your teeth for a lot of things for your left hand. And I just dug my feet in and said, people who use their teeth are disabled and I'll never use my teeth. And you know, in 14 years, I've worn out three sets of false teeth and <laughs> I'm ready for another one, <laughs> which I'm not sure we can afford to pay for. <laughs> but I do use my teeth for everything. And they're already chopped and um, frozen, and that's the only way to buy chopped onions. I use uh, a lot of onion, and I, I had quit using onion. And um, this is some parsley, and I always chop things like this with my scissors in the bowl. You can buy, you can get, like I have a, a, a chopper like this, it's on a cradle. But with one hand, it's, it's awkward to um, use, and it makes a mess. I just find it's easier to contain it in a bowl and cut it up with a pair of scissors. Now, pepper, paprika, oh, the tomatoes. And it, it, it's um, usually, um, I either use a, a, a bottle of jarred tomato sauce or just a can of tomatoes. I'm using the jarred sauce just because I wanted to show you this really cool gadget. I have, I've had so many people um, want to know how, how, where they can purchase this. And it just, it takes the jar, the top off of any size jar. And then you just lift it up and take it out in the jar, the lid's off. The other piece of equipment that I could not be without, in fact, I bought three of these because I couldn't find them and I was stumbled on them on sale one day. It's a it's a can opener and it it it, it it's just it opens the can with one hand and it eliminates the sharp edge. There it goes. You can tell that it's open because it stops turning around. And the top just comes off and there's no sharp edge on the can so you can't cut yourself. Working with one hand and the, the limitations of the stroke emotionally leave you very frustrated lots of times. And so if you're frustrated trying to open a can or open a jar and you get more frustrated, you get angry and then you cry and then it just, you, you end up in a heap and you're no good for anything. You, you might as well give up the task. I started to um, uh, make a record of the things that were, I was struggling with if it took me more than 15 minutes to do it, then I decided it wasn't worth it. If I couldn't get the soup open, the soup didn't, this can didn't go in this soup. I'd, I'll, I'd substitute. But then I'd make a mental note, or I'd kept a list, and when I would be at, in a mall, I'd have my list with me, and I would be looking for things, different types of equipment that could help me do that task. That's just with the occupational therapist who was I trying to help me work through the issues of dressing, which is just huge. I mean, it, that's one of the biggest struggles of my day still. I'm, I'm fortunate I have a wonderful husband. He loves helping me get dressed. <laughs> he, he tells me his claim to fame now is he's the only man that's been married more than 35 years or 40 years that help, helps put his wife's clothes on more than take them off. <laughs> I think Doug and I, I think Doug would agree that we're closer than we've ever been at any point in our married life. But I think that, I think the potential for you to be, you are, you're either going to be closer or you're going to drift apart. 
I, I don't think there's any, there's no way, way that having a, a, an illness like this with a, with a couple is going to keep you mediocre. You're not going to be, you know, a lukewarm relationship. You're either going to hate each other or you're going to be, love each other more. And that's how it happened for us. And it's work. It doesn't just happen. No. No, it's made it better. <laughs> it's a fear that you have to get over that, 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 that it's not going to be possible. But I think we're closer and, and intimately than we ever were. It is not something you need to give up. Absolutely not. Now this one works, I know, but I just have to... There we go. Now, take your paintbrush and put lots of drops of water in. That's the water. birth of my first granddaughter was three months after I came home from Toronto. Oh. And I was in my daughter's uh, room when the baby was brought in, and I had to watch the other grandma reach down and uh, pick her up out of the bassinet and take her to my daughter. I watched the other grandma sit and feed her a bottle and change her diapers. I saw the other grandma take her home for the weekend and give my daughter a rest, you know. And I thought my heart would absolutely break in two. I, I didn't think I'd ever get over the pain of that. That was almost more painful for me than if I never walked again or... But this uh, counselor, Anne, she, she said, you know what, Millie, it, there's so much more importance in your worth um, as a grandparent that comes out of your heart, not with what you do with your hands. Grandma loved doing these because they turned out so pretty. And the fr that's the leaf from the cosmos as well. Mm. So you're going to do exactly the same thing Kyle did, is dip it. And I know now or if I could encourage people that have two hands to start and live life out of their heart, I've been able to wrap my heart around my granddaughter and son, and as they've come along, I have four now, unbelievably more than I ever could have uh, thought that I could. And in fact, Probably because I'm not at work now, I've had the time um, and the, uh, just the time and the emotional ability to sit with them and, and do things that are far more special than if I'd been working and could pay to take them to a show or whatever. What do you know about Grandma Millie? I know that she's in the hospital for a very, very long time, struggling, and the doctors told her she was never going to walk again. But... One day she just got up and started walking. <laughs> and now, and I remember pushing her in a wheelchair in the hospital. Yeah, she did. All over the place. Yep. And do you know, do you know that stroke is something that happens in your brain? Do you know you knew that? We talked about that. But the thing, the thing that you know the most is that I have to do things differently now, yeah. right? Hi. How you doing? Good. You. Good. Got three rolls, please. One hour or five days? Five days. Five days. Okay. There you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is Mike at the grocery store here. This has been my job for 13 years. Work, like this, I work in the photo lab. Before I had Griffin, I used to work, I used to be a cashier, but then I was off for almost two years, and I wanted to come back to work. So they found this is just a better spot for me where I can. I manage it a little bit more with one hand. So I transfer from cash over to photo. So. You know, yeah, I miss all those things like running and jumping and stuff like that. But I wanted so badly to hold Griffin with both of my arms, so badly to, and like playing the piano again, so badly to play the piano. And just, yeah, it's always been my arm. And I remember being told, you know, oh, maybe a year, and when the year came by and my arm still wasn't really doing much, and every, every milestone came by and it still wasn't doing much, and I just kept thinking, it, like when they would tell me at the time, it maybe a year, a year seemed so far away. But, you know, I was told that, um, I remember Colleen from, Par from Parkwood, um, my social worker, her saying, telling me and telling my parents, you know, eventually you just adapt and you just get used to it and it doesn't even not the bother, but you just kind of get used to it. And I remember hearing that and I remember saying, I am not going to adapt. I'm not going to accept this. I'm not going to get used to this. But you do. Blue 
There were many days I wanted to give up. It was Griffin that kept me going. I thought, what good? I've got this little baby who needs me. I What good is it to him if I give up? Oh, trust me, there were days I just, if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I would have been by now. No, every time I get a new call, like a new parent calling, coming and calling in, right, right away I said, first off I tell them what happened because I want to be upfront and honest. I say I just want to avoid an uncomfortable situation when you walk through that door and look at me and wonder what happened. And they're all very good with it and they're all like, they don't care. They, could care, they don't care at all. I just tell them. Sometimes when I'm on the phone with parent, new parents, I'll forget to tell them. And then I've even had it for a while to call back just because it's so not an issue in my classes that I sometimes yeah. forget that it, to tell them. And then they always say they appreciate my, my honesty and stuff. Ready and sing when the sun peaks from I guess for work, you know, like I change departments at work at Zares and then with my teaching, yeah, I'm doing things differently. There's always some way you can do it. There's always something you can do. You just might have to do it differently. The advantage for me is, I'm like most women, I love to have a bath. And this house has a jacuzzi tub. I can't get up and down out of a tub. They make me sit, home care makes me sit on a bath chair like a, a bath bench, and you don't get down in the water. This, I sit on it. I can't do it alone, but it, the advantage for me is that it, it helps me to get in the tub, and I can go right down in the tub as low as if I was. You, you know, I, I didn't find out about this bath chair for two and a half years, and I was, I hated the bath time because I had to have help and I had to sit up on this bench across and somebody showered me. I felt like I was in a car wash. Somebody was soaping you off and washing you down. Uh, I could get into a shower if it's if there's handlebars or a seat, which this house has. That, that This shower has a seat and, and a grab bar for me to hang on to, so I can take a shower, but I, I prefer this. And with a jacuzzi, I could sit in here for an hour sometimes with the jets on, I could never do that without this bath chair. I longed to have a bath, and I stumbled on this by accident. I was having a counseling session with my occupational therapist in the hospital and telling her how I hated this stupid way I had to have a bath. And she said, well, I know where there's a secondhand bath chair. Why don't we experiment with it and see if it'll work for you? So she hooked it up, and I had a, a, a test run in it, and right away I was hooked. And this piece of equipment, I couldn't live without it. I'd never be without one. I told Doug he'd have to sell his old car if this one breaks because I need to have a bath chair. <laughs> but they're not expensive. They range in price from 700 to $1,200, and you can get Cadillac ones, you know, that you can lean back in if that's what you want to pay the money for. I love this chair because I can sit and look out at the water if I stay awake long enough. It's an amazing chair. It, it's anybody who's had a stroke that's got a disability should have one. And we saw it advertised in the newspaper secondhand and went and looked at it. Uh, we had priced them when they were new. They're new anywhere from fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars. This lady's husband had had a stroke, and she just wanted to pass it on to me. And I think we paid three hundred dollars for it secondhand, but it was like new. And it brings you right up to a standing position. And pe people who have had a stroke know one of the hardest things is you get down in a chair trying to get out is next to impossible. But it, it brings you right up. My grandchildren have a heyday on this thing if i not in the room. <laughs> I'm never sure how far it's going to go feel like a queen sitting on a throne, and then you just stand up. That's it's great. so great. We have a wheelchair uh, in the garage that uh, Millie painted uh, flowers. flowers on, so oh, we load it in the airplane. We know that it's ours when we get to the other end because we had some trouble. And I'd like to know how many miles are on that wheelchair between every country that we've been in. Women especially hate a cane, and I call it an attitude adjustment. If you have something in your life that you don't like, change your attitude about it and make it part of, of who you are. And I get more comments about my canes everywhere I go when I take a painted one. It's not hard. 
Th this, th th this cane, of course, I've painted roses on it. These canes are just sponged with a, with a sponge with three or four colors of paint. And uh, I took a feather. You can hold that. I took a, a feather and just feathered the ivory through it. All the controls that are normally on the, on the left-hand side of the vehicle have all been switched over to the right, so I don't have to reach across the wheel to do any thing over here. It's all on the right side of, my car, of the car. And they also would have put a swivel seat in. Actually, it's a good thing to know, Ford, <laughs> whether I can say that or not, they pay $1,000 to have a car handicapped um, accessible when you buy a new car from them. So that was, yeah, that's how we found out about, about being able to do these, these uh, modifications.